Having a centralized store is great because it allows us to just, well, store all of our data in a centralized fashion. And uh, in this case, we're sort of simulating getting a token after logging in. However, we want to be able to handle refreshes because it's kind of annoying if, if our, our, our user refreshes the page um, and then comes back and has to log in every single time that can get a little bit tedious and old. Storing the token that they get back into local storage could be really nice. Now we could set this up all manually, but uh, Udux has a, uh, has a feature in it uh, that, allow, that allows us to essentially persist our, uh, our state to local storage. So if we take a look at that, we have persistence here. And it talks about how we can now automatically have it uh, store everything to local storage for us. Now, caveat for this, uh, we are storing the password in there right now. This would probably make us um, more hesitant to store that in there uh, because we don't want that to ever go into local storage in plain text. Uh, it's just something we want. It's okay to be in memory. Uh, in like a store that doesn't go there, but uh, probably want to use something like a uh, use state um, and then persist that to local storage once we're done with it. Let's show you what I mean uh, by setting this up. Okay, so first of all, it says we need to use survey. And specifically, we need to use serialize and deserialize um, as a derived macro on our state. So we need to go grab survey itself uh, that's easy enough. We're going to come into our cargo Tamil and add in survey. And we'll go ahead and get the latest version. Now, as soon as we try to add serialize and deserialize, Let it try to save. Um, oh, I was expecting this to fail. Maybe, maybe they handle it in a new version. Usually, or at least in the past, we've needed to set a um, a feature for Serde to have this work. So if it doesn't work, we're gonna we're gonna sort of keep an eye on that. Make sure make sure that things are okay. All right, so we have serialize and deserialize. What's next? We now need to impulse persistent for my state. This is not something that we can derive macro. We have to do this manually. So uh, we don't need this in it anymore. It doesn't need to be called with a functional um, a functional store. So we're gonna do impulse. Uh, what is it called? Persistent. So persistent for Udux store. And let's implement the default members. And we have two things here. So we have key. Um, this is going to be the key that it's stored of under in local storage. So generally speaking, it, you would want to name this something. It looks like right now it's going to get our tape name. So Udux store and throw that in there. What we could do is replace this with the application name. So in this case, um, we're gonna call this maybe like introduction to uh, u.rs. Now area is where it's gonna go. And our choices here, if we take a look, is local and session. And this stands for local storage or session storage. Local storage is gonna be persistent um, across refreshes. In fact, you can shut down your computer, uh, re reboot it, bring it back later, and local storage will still be up there and, and working for you. Session storage is a little bit more ephemeral. It's going to disappear on you after, well, the session ends. So perfect for something storing like right then, and you want to get rid of it shortly afterwards. Even so, I still wouldn't store the password in session storage. We're gonna use local for this. Um, okay, so next things up, because this kind of works, but we're not done setting up yet. In our components that are reading from and saving to the state, we now need to switch away from using a basic store 
to a persistent store because we just set that up. So I'm going to do that on both display and login. And that should be enough for us. So we're going to come back to here. I'm going to go ahead and open up storage here. And we can take a look in local storage. I've actually was previously playing with this. Let's go ahead and delete that. Uh, we have nothing in here right now. If I hit refresh, everything is blank. There's nothing in here. So I'm going to just type in Brooks. Username shows here, and then we see immediately our key, introduction to u.rs, shows up, and then the value is a stringified version of our, our store. And we can play around with that. You can make changes to this. Uh, something to be aware of, if you do try to change something, like we change this from like Brooks to you know other, that's fine here, but as soon as I add in like a password, it rechanges this to back to Brooks. And that's because every single time we make a change, it's serializing the entire object and overwriting this entire thing. So something to be aware of is once you're using um, persistent store, let it manage this object. Don't try to like do any manual local storage sort of uh, updating yourself in you know separate code. It's just gonna be overridden. And if I hit refresh, then it loads all of these things up from uh, local storage. So uh, these are persistent. As we can see, having the plain text password there kind of is a security vulnerability. So uh, I'm not going to do it as part of this video. I'm going to leave this as a um, uh, sort of exercise for you. But in login, I, what I would do is instead of doing um, handle username change doing a reduced callback with to the state, I would probably use um, use state and then store it in this component state. And then on uh, handle form submit, grab that state out and then set just the token, maybe the username also. But that way the password doesn't need to be in the centrally store at all. And uh, then we can just be safe from accidentally putting it into local storage. Um, all right, that, uh, that is how we can get persistent across refreshes uh, state, which is really nice and really awesome. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.